which is completely crazy when you think about it. Like the, the whole DeFi ecosystem was uh, less than one billion a year ago. And uh, uh, yeah. now, uh, now you have a, a single protocol that grew from uh, $1 billion in a day. And that's actually a good thing for Aave, but it's especially a, uh, an even better thing for the whole ecosystem because uh, we reach project market fit on decentralized finance. Uh, there's a fully fledged ecosystem. There's like, like, I, like I often say, it's a fact that most Aave users don't use Aave. They interact with Aave with like, for example, the, the smart wallets on uh, in startup or DeFi server, they use YNVOL, they use uh, Mstable, they use like uh, curve.finance, all these protocols. And these, those synergies, those bridges we build between the community and the protocol uh, makes DeFi and stop people, at least in my eyes. Hi, everyone. My name is Andy Boyan with Chainlink Labs, and this is a Chainlink user roundtable. We wanted to take some time today to learn about Instadapp's recently released Aave Debt Financing Bridge. This release takes advantage of composability in DeFi to let users move debt from layer one on Ethereum to Polygon, also Ethereum. We brought Mark Zeller from Aave, Luis Gitpusha working on Gelato, Samyak Jain from Instadep, and Pradav Maiswari from Polygon to talk about this release and what it means for scaling DeFi. Now, we've all already been chatting a little bit. We jumped in a room and just started talking DeFi as uh, the, we are want, builders are want to do. But let me start with Samyak. Congratulations on the launch. Can you explain what this debt financing solution accomplishes? How does it work? So yeah, I mean, uh, on a very basic level, it's like uh, we we like uh, instead of enter into the market with the depth refinancing feature two years ago when we launched Maker Compound refinancing, and uh, it was like it was like instead of thing to build a refinancing thing. Then uh, after this, like we saw Aave on Polygon and the opportunities between uh, between chains. So this was the obvious next step after doing composability, extreme composability on layer one. Uh, what about the composability between chains, like between L1 and L2s and possibly in future between L2s and L2s. So yeah, uh, we thought about the complexities, like you can easily move your balances from L1 to L2s, but you can't really move your depth positions. And if you want to move a depth position, then you will have to wipe your depth move the collateral tokens and then you have to borrow the debt, which is technically not possible because user probably don't have a uh, debt to pay back. Like if they have the tokens to pay back, then they won't have a debt position in the first place. So that was the complexities. And we thought about the technicalities like, uh, uh, so how it works, should I get into that? Um, um, sure, yeah, yeah, go into a little bit of how it works. That'd be great. Yeah, so basically what we are doing is we are not moving the entire position from layer one to layer two. What we are doing is we are getting the user's position on layer one into our smart contract. Uh, so we are moving users away position into our giant away position on L1. And then we are transferring the data using the polygons decentralized data transfer from L1 to polygon. And we're transferring the user's position data from L1 to L2. And then with the help of Gelato, uh, they are tracking like whenever there is new data transfer, they run an automation. And if the transaction is going to be successful, it creates a position. And we have a liquidity on L2, which uh, Aave provided us with uh, on Matic tokens, which helps us to create a position for users. So users position is, uh, is in L1 in our contract and we, create, we give them a new position on L2. And over time we do the settlement between L1 and L2s and it's just like we do this backend settlement, but there is a liquidity, a huge amount of liquidity to facilitate this process. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works. It, it, it's not like transferring the tokens. It's about just transferring the data and uh, just doing the round off and only transferring the assets that are required in general. So if a user wants to move depth and another user wants to move, uh, sorry, a user wants to move die depth and another user wants to move die collateral, then we won't move that from L1 to L2 rather than we will just settle that die depth and die collateral into L1 and we'll just transfer the user's data. So that's how it's working. Matt, the, the problem statement is, is what problem is this solving? It's, well, I've got a debt position, I owe money, but I don't have the money to yeah, pay yeah. back the money. 
or and I don't want to, right? It's a bunch of fees to, you know, to, to, to settle that debt and I mean, then move over and yeah. do all that. Let's simplify that process. Yeah. Um, uh, that's fantastic. And uh, Luis, so Gelato, you're from Gelato and uh, uh, Samiak mentioned Gelato Automation is part of this. You guys also had a recent um, release. Uh, can you talk yeah. about that release and like how this plays into the Instant App debt financing a little bit? Yes, uh, so actually um, we were working with Instant App uh, already since uh, last summer and in February, uh, February we launched uh, a, a debt bridge on layer one uh, on, on Ethereum mainnet um, that was using the Gelato version uh, one. Um, it took us quite a long time to build it. It was a complicated feature, basically, you know, a moving debt from uh, a maker is a vault into Aave in order to forego liquidation. Um, and uh, yeah, so recently uh, Samyak uh, told me that they are also uh, working on uh, basically this uh, migration to Polygon and we were all already thinking, okay, we should, of course, we also want to be on Polygon, especially uh, if Instadep is there and we, we can help them uh, with the bot network to, to improve UX there. And yeah, so it was by coincidence that we recently also released our the Gelato version two, which is um, a much less opinionated protocol than the version one. It's way less smart contracts than the version one, which usually means uh, you, you can use more like TypeScript, Python, whatever you want to, to write your tests, to build your features. So this increases the speed of delivery a lot. And, and we were able to, um, with our new Gelato version, write the, the bot software that uh, was able to serve and automate this instead of a bridge from, from layer one to layer two in, in just like a, one hour or so. Um, and also I have to give a huge shout out to like the Polygon uh, dev experience. I, I didn't know like what to do initially. I just went to the docs. I literally just changed like uh, the URL for the network in my hardhead project and just deployed the contracts there. If you don't use any like contracts that rely on uh, dependencies that aren't there yet, like you're, it's so easy to get started. It, it was super easy and yeah, we got everything up and running in, in less than a day. So uh, yeah, that was pretty smooth. That's awesome. Uh, Pranav, you, before we jumped into uh, the discussion, you were talking about something um, about retail users and how, you know, with tools like this, well, well now we're seeing like the, the dev experience is faster. People, we're getting better at writing dev tools and documentation and getting things live. And now the automation is getting faster with things like Gelato. Scaling is getting faster. This is all happening. Like <laughs> your contention, your, your proposal was that um, this is what we need to see more retail users. And that was my question is for uh, Aave on Polygon and Polygon, are you seeing more retail? Are you seeing still just a bunch of whales coming in? Like wh what's it look like? Uh, I won't say that, you know, it's just about retail or just about whales coming. It is a mix of both really, really uh, coupled into really, you know, a great experience that Polygon is providing on, uh, you know, with Aave's uh, great uh, debt market position and stuff like that. So, so like, you know, the one thing that we were talking, you know, before this particular recording was that, you know, uh, retail currently, currently are not so well versed on DeFi, in DeFi on, you know, the Ethereum networks. The, the, the reason that might occur on that particular part is that, you know, maybe because we don't have the correct user experience over there, or, you know, there is a lot of transaction fees that is required to make things happen. Right. And that is the reason why, you know, layer twos are definitely the way for retail people, you know, the people who have uh, less amount of stake to actually do, but still want to experience and, you know, understand how DeFi works, if it is an alternative to banking and, you know, how we can have this open, uh, you know, a position where people can just lend, borrow and, you know, make things happen without third parties and you know related uh, retail stuff so that was basically the you know uh, the, the gist of me talking about that so yeah that is that is uh, basically uh, what polygon is trying to do now it is going to be or rather trying to be the lay to uh, you know give the lay to experience which uh, will not just attract uh, DeFi whales, but all the retail people or all the people who love Ethereum, who love, you know, being on an open financial market uh, ecosystem. And yeah, that's what we are working on currently. And that is the reason why, you know, Aave on Polygon has attracted a lot of uh, uh, retail users. Uh, just to quote some stats, like we have, you know, it, it's been two to three weeks since Aave launched and we have about $1 billion of liquidity and 7,500 people already onboarded on Polygon. So uh, seeing that particular thing, you know, we, we actually committed a good amount of value, about $150 million just to make this happen and facilitate this, right? To 
assure and you know accrue more of the liquidity mining program that actually you know makes things even better and you know incentivizes retail users uh, not just to try defi but get into it get well versed with it and you know leave the uh, financial debt market positions that exist in the uh, you know current ecosystems in the physical world right Mark, what are you hearing from your users about user experience and uh, Aave in general, but Aave on Polygon? Well, the, the first thing is that finally I can try DeFi. Like, because <laughs> let's face it, if your net worth is less than five figures or even less than six figures, uh, it's very hard to use Ethereum layer one right now. And personally, I am. Uh, um, we are all here in this panel of building things and we are building finance for everyone because uh, we are all sharing that idea that we are providing an alternative to what exists in the world right now, because what exists in the world right now is not good enough for most people. And if we build something for only people that are worth $10,000 and more, I'm not interested. I would not spend 16 hours of my day every day since six years to, to just that. That's not the point. And I think everyone agrees in this panel. And thanks to Polygon, uh, I can literally, if I have like $50 equivalent and I'm someone in India, I can send that to global.transact.com and send a wire transfer from my Indian account uh, directly to Polygon. And they will deliver me uh, the asset directly on Polygon. I don't have to use any centralized exchange. That's something that is super easy and will be uh, done in less than a couple of days, worst case scenario. Then I sign up with my MetaMask on wallet.network. Uh, 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 matic.network and they will airdrop me a very small fraction of matic but uh, transaction fee are so cheap that that for a small fraction of matic will uh, cover a few transactions for me and i can deposit that into Aave. thanks to liquidity mining i will get some matic to get my transaction fee independence and get my uh, share of the network as an active uh, participant in the blockchain Maybe what I deposit, I will deposit that into Curve. Maybe I will do my first trade on Comet Swap, on Quick Swap. I will try the ecosystem and I will learn from there because there's a lot of theory online. There's a lot of things we can read, we can learn uh, that way. There's a lot of tutorials, but nothing will replace actually doing things like having a wallet with a few bucks in it and doing those things. On Ethereum, doing uh, the transaction and the interaction I talked about, it's at least eight and uh, I don't know eighty one hundred fifty dollars of transaction fee. Mm -hmm. On Matic, it's not one cent. It's much lower than one cent to do all that. And finally, everybody can access DeFi again. And I think it's a game changer. That's a paradigm shift. And that's every all the efforts uh, we uh, did in the ecosystem since this summer and six years. Uh, to be honest, uh, there's still a lot to do. There's still a lot to, uh, to improve. We are still all working on it, but we are getting there. We want DeFi for everyone. You know, it, working in the space in 2019, 2020, early 2020, you could do all this stuff on Ethereum for a lot less. You know, it's just the way yeah, it works. Yeah. So I feel like people... Yeah, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I remember like when we entered into the industry in 2017, we used to do all the testing on mainnet, just deploy the contracts without any issue. Like it was like the gas was one way. So it was like, it used to be less than a dollar and we used to do all, all the things. And now it's like, you have to do super good testing before going proceeding forward because the deploying contract might cost you $400, $500. So, right, right. And also, you know, uh, just to just to add up on that, you know, there are many teams who have talked to us who thought that, you know, we we, we don't want to move on, you know, uh, uh, move away from Ethereum and move to a layer two. We want to be on Ethereum itself. And let's try to actually, you know, optimize the contract that we have and try to, you know, uh, subsidize, uh, subsidize the fees or, you know, make it work anyhow, you know, just to decrease the fees and make things work. But actually, you know, with the uh, Ethereum price boom rocketing and, you know, a lot of congestion in the network, Definitely scaling solutions were the only solution and, you know, uh, layer two actually gives you that opportunity to be on Ethereum ecosystem, use that security and despite that, you know, have the security uh, and have the scale of, you know, uh, uh, the one which, you know, you, you envisioned something like, you know, one, uh, something like 777,000 transactions a second or something like that. So yeah, that, that was. And what I really now, like uh, about Polygon is that uh, it's a several layer project. So what 
we are most of us using as protocol right now is the, the proof of stake uh, blockchain uh, that some will call sidechain, some will call commit chain. Uh, obviously, it's a big topic and maybe that's not the main topic today, but it's only one small part of what is Polygon. And there's going to be also other solutions uh, that will be implemented. And the whole ecosystem of Polygon is about experimenting, trying new things, building step by step, build things that works now, but also build things that will work later and that will be even better later. And that, that whole reason is super interesting uh, when you are a developer and you, uh, you support a protocol. Actually, I wanted to uh, also follow up on what you said earlier, Mark, with like how on Polygon now uh, you, you normal users can do a lot of stuff that they wouldn't be able to do on, on Ethereum. Uh, at Gelato, we are mostly developer focused. And I would say the same is true also for the developer users, right? The people that maybe don't have like funding in, in their startup or, or whatsoever, like all of this beautiful experimentation that we were able to do, like Samyak said, back in 2018, 2019, for a little money on, on Ethereum mainnet, it's gone now, right? Like every time we write a smart contract, we have to spend hours and hours just optimizing like gas, you know? And, and while it kind of gets like maybe a game for some, it actually it feels like wasting time sometimes, spending so much time just <laughs> optimizing, working around the EVM gas stuff, which is completely arbitrary, right? Like it, it's, it, it's weird. So uh, I think uh, I'm really excited for that. I hope that on Polygon we can like uh, again like have a renaissance of ex uh, developer experimentation again, writing smart contracts uh, without fear of how much gas something will cost, uh, and and just also I mean for Gelato we have so many features that we had had to say goodbye to half a year ago um, that would require a lot of transactions. Our goal at one point was to maximize the trans transactions per user by basically letting them uh, access bots. Right, a normal user would just manually transact during the day maybe but not at night when they sleep with gelato we want everyone to basically increase their rate of transactions the per capita rate of transactions a lot and of course on ethereum mainnet this is at the moment a weird like mm -hmm. a, an awkward goal mm -hmm. to have because everyone wants to reduce their transactions on martish again or on, on polygon uh, and matic uh, we can again have use cases like i don't know maybe trading uh, volatility in a really small margin that become possible again opportunities that are open again just because we don't have to always think is it even worth it if it costs us two hundred dollars worth of gas for every transaction so i'm really excited for that as well also uh in the about uh, chain link know that uh, transaction fee are very very cheap on polygon you can develop new use case because basically in DeFi, all the ltv parameters the liquidation uh, parameters where uh, the loan are over collateralized with like pretty conservative parameters, but it's due because transaction fee are uh, expensive on Ethereum layer one, and also uh, the network is relatively so, uh, slow. And it's also a lot of legacy from uh, the, the early days of DeFi where the whole liquidity and volume were like less than 1% that it is right now. And when you have this kind of network and this kind of playgrounds as a developers where you, you can test new things and uh, do these kind of things. You can have like a price feed oracle from Chainlink uh, that we use at Aave uh, that instead of having a derivation uh, threshold of 1%, 2%, you can put it at 0.1%. And if you do that, you can uh, create special market, for example, on Aave or on MakerDAO uh, that will have like a much more risky uh, LTV because you know that the price information inside your smart contract will be updated much more often and much more precisely. So you create one new use case. I'm thinking, for example, of margin trading. Like margin trading, it's not very efficient right now on DeFi for a whole lot of reasons. But if you have like faster, cheaper transaction, you can en enable this kind of use case. A full range of new use cases are possible now. Right, right. Well, and and just not, you know, uh, go ahead. Sure. Okay. So, you know, this just not the faster, cheaper transaction, just not actually, you know, uh, mm -hmm. increases the whole lot possibility, but also as I was specifying on increases the user experience, right? Because currently on Ethereum, you cannot have, you know, meta agnostic, you know, relayer based transactions in which you just give them the public private key and the relay does the transaction for you because it is 
economically not viable right all the transactions you are doing the all of them happening via relayer and the relayer paying for it but on matic on the other hand it is very much possible and that is the reason why you know gsn and biconomy both are you know meta transaction agnostic uh, uh, relayer infrastructures are so very much popular and you know that is the reason like you know if a user comes he does not have to have you know matic or any of these things to do the transactions or you know interact with the dapps deployed on matic what they need to have is just you know a public private key maybe from metamask or you know uh, use any uh, any kind of wallet they just need to sign a transaction give the pub, you know give them the authority to do that and rest of the things is handled by the ecosystem right so there is a whole lot of you know new new uh, uh, infrastructural and use case based you know uh, things coming up and definitely layer 2s will um, uh, um, uh, emphasize that empower that and yeah definitely you are right on that part that you know a lot of new opportunities will open not just in defi nfts but you know a lot of new things let's say social tokens um so great user experience changes with scaling and all these bridges and composability what challenges still remain like what are kind of the next major walls that as, as developers and builders you guys are are going after you got in mind i know everyone's thinking like three six ten months down the road what's next uh what what i would say you know as per the experience of people using wallet you know wallet which is official wallet of uh, matic or polygon is that you know whenever people transfer their funds or let's say tokens from ethereum to matic it takes about 8 to 10 minutes and that's again uh, it is not that quick but it is still okay you know for people to do that but when on the other hand they are moving their you know uh, tokens from something like matic to ethereum because of the security and you know decentralization of the bridge it takes about 3 hours right i can go into the technical part but i'm you know not touching that surface but currently it takes about 3 hours because the checkpoint that matic does is about you know every 3 hours so it is about 3 hours and we cannot expect people right now you know who are the uh, retail again retail users to wait for funds you know once they have transferred and booked their stuff on Mat uh, on matic to you know avail it in 3 hours or 6 hours or whatever right and that is one of the things that currently polygon is working on we are working on a fast exit for moving you know assets from something like ethereum to matic biconomy is building one of these solutions and other one is being built by uh, you know a, a, a connect network they have uh, partnered with decentral you know games and their exit was live uh, before you know some time back i checked uh, using the their uh, state channel based approach they can move their funds from matic to ethereum uh, you know there we we also you know in our wallet also included it for usdc usdt and two three stable coins which were very active the only problem you know or the only hurdle in con using connects for fast exits from matic to ethereum which takes about two or one minute and you know in increases the user experience is that you know uh, the vector node that does all this you know movement requires its own liquidity and that's where you know we have to think about if let's say you know a token wants to move from matic to ethereum using fast exit uh, the vector node which makes it happen on the connect has to have its own liquidity and that's where you know sometimes there is a imbalance let's say you know there is a lot of traffic moving from ethereum to matic so there will be a uh, you know a dry up of liquidity on that vector node and that will cause the issue so yeah connect team is definitely working on that and we are also you know exploring more and more Uh, options of fast exits from you know matic to ethereum and vice versa and making things even better so yeah as there's more defi legos you got to speed up each lego in the chain <laughs> right like okay now we got to speed up the bridge and these things uh samiak what are you guys working on what's your challenges that you're solving next um on the challenges like we are uh, targeting like we we just launched the l1 l2 bridge now there there is a huge opportunity on polygon like we can try lot, there were a lot of ideas before that we had which we weren't able to execute on layer 1 uh, either it's automation or like once now polygon has scalability so you can also bring back the uh, limit orders and many other different kinds of things so we we, we one thing that we are currently exploring um, is and, and probably might work so might start the work soon is defi limit orders uh, in which you can create limit orders through your defi positions so basically uh, a swap through your defi position so let's say you want uh, um, if you have a defi like uh, if you want to do some earnings uh, through your defi positions like you can't use those assets right now if, if you have an ave position in which you have uh, ethereum collateral and dai dapps let's say you want to uh, provide a swap for stable coins so you can switch your dai dapp to usdc by creating a limit order and back and forth 
so the public can get a swap between dai and usdc and you can switch your dap from between dai and usdc and earn the margin that you are taking maybe 0.05% or something so dap swap collateral swap leveraging saving all these kind of things can happen through defi limit orders and now there is scalability so these solutions will be viable so this is something that we will explore uh, but yeah this is something that we can really build on polygon without thinking of the fees right now it's not possible on player one because everyone is into amm because of the gas price so limit orders is not kind of the thing but yeah this is one something, of the thing and something yeah. like that would that tighten the arbitrage and and like bring prices all closer to their their peg as well because there's so much that yeah, now you get automated yeah, arbitrage for no money it will be so basically just think like you are providing swaps through your ave position like that position you're not going to uh, like it's just sitting idle like you have created your position it can also be uh, a position like <clears throat> let's say dai collateral and dai dap now you're providing a swap between dai to usdc from collateral swap and dap swap so basically let's say you have a 100 dollar of assets but you are able to provide a swap worth of 1000 dollars because you have just made your position so big like hundred dollar position, and now you have six hundred dollar worth of collateral and five hundred dollar worth of debt. Now you can provide a six hundred dollar worth of collateral swap and five hundred dollar worth of debt swap. So it's like eleven hundred dollar worth of swap through your hundred dollar position. So it's like eleven x swap through a limit order, which is like not possible, which has not been possible ever before. And I think like this can bring the price way way closer, especially on the stable coins, but also on Ethereum and RabbitBTC are other things when user wants to do collateral swap between Ethereum and RabbitBTC. And there's one more thing like on the riskiness of the position. So let's say RabbitBTC has lower liquidation limit than Ethereum. Now, uh, if your position is about to get liquidated, then swap your RabbitBTC collateral into Ethereum collateral. So you will get a margin on your liquidation because Ethereum has higher liquidation limit. So if the, these kind of limit orders will be possible, then that is something that is possible that could be possible on Polygon, but not on L1. That, that, that is one thing that we are exploring currently. So Samyak went into his file cabinet and pulled out all his weird dream journal ideas of what he wanted to build um, a year ago or two years ago. And now he's making it all come to life. That's pretty cool. Uh, Luis, yeah. what are you guys building? So um, yeah, we like I said, we just released the version two, which uh, the main aim of the re-architecture was to allow us to ship a new feature every day, basically. Um, I mean, we, we do serve dev developers. So uh, the main goal is that developers come to us with like a, a problem or something they need automated. And then we, we write the bot software and that automates it. Um, but we also have some of our own features, like uh, we recently uh, revamped our original alpha UI from like over a year ago, which had limit orders back then, and, and now it's back live. We re reanimated it, we shut it down for like a year or so because we were only focusing on developers, but we thought, uh, what the hell, let's also uh, lo launch limit orders, why not? So we have that live at the moment, so we finance, um, got quite a, quite a lot of orders in already. This is on Ethereum mainnet. Uh, but we soon want to also like probably today or tomorrow uh, um, launch that on QuickSwap. So we also have limit orders on QuickSwap. Um, that will, will be really cool. We already have many requests from users that basically say that um, the transaction costs are too high. So um, yeah, that will be cool. And yeah, so I mean, uh, whatever InstaDev wants to automate or other wants to automate on Polygon, we're there. We can We can help you with that. And uh, yeah, I think uh, a lot of the focus this summer will be on layer two for sure. Fantastic. Mark, what challenges do you see are next? What's Ave building next? Um, so Ave is about to deploy two new projects, but I'm not at the liberty to, to share them. But <laughs> uh, there, there's, you can expect big things from Ave uh, in the next few uh, let's say weeks, even if it's days, but you know, development works. Um, <laughs> And, um, but uh, I would say that right now, uh, the biggest bottleneck uh, for Polygon adoption is the on-ramp and off-ramp. So how to help people, like people that just discovered crypto maybe three months ago or six months ago and are listening to us uh, right now, 
uh, they want to jump in. They, they want to say, oh, I heard those guys speaking in the panel and I want to try this thing. And all mm -hmm. they do that. In many countries, it's super hard. Like to, to be honest, uh, in many countries around the world, uh, it's super hard to access. It's super hard to create an account in the centralized exchange. Uh, most centralized exchanges won't let you withdraw directly to Polygon. They will let you withdraw to Ethereum layer one, then you take the bridge. But doing that will cost you probably $40, $50. Uh, that's too much for most people. Uh, you have Transac, you have Run Through Network, uh, the, the on drop I, I talked about, but that's not enough. I think uh, that's probably uh, one of the, the biggest things to improve over the next few weeks. Um, for example, there's been an initiative I did with the Connex team uh, about uh, BSC, so the Binance Smart Chain uh, blockchain and uh, Polygon blockchain bridge in order to have some liquidity. So if you are a Binance user, you can withdraw some funds directly to the BSC and then send those from, from the BSC to Polygon. Uh, this initiative is like, a bit more than two weeks old, uh, got thousands of users, millions of dollars of volume. Uh, it was like very uh, successful for a test and uh, liquidity will increase a lot uh, over the next few days uh, inside that bridge that will allow people uh, to access more of this. And yeah, there's still a lot to do. Uh, I have the feeling that DeFi is much better right now than one year ago when we look at uh, what we can do with decentralized finance, what are the ecosystem and the application, but I want DeFi to be much better in one year from now. And I think we are all working together on this. It's incredible that in our ecosystem, it's only synergies. Like Ave use uh, Shending Price Feed, we use uh, Instadap and uh, people can use Instadap to, to use uh, Ave. Uh, I really want to work with Gelato on automation. I have a lot of good ideas. So we should definitely start a chat with uh, just after this call. And uh, yeah, sure, there's yeah. so many mm -hmm. good things we, we can do together. And the target audience, it's the average users, like people that just discovered Disco. Uh, <laughs> Disco, it's fun. Uh, DeFi <laughs> and, and, and will discover DeFi in, in six months or in one year. We want to provide them the best experience. They are the reason we are working countless hours in this ecosystem because they deserve it. They deserve a better alter alternative to finance than what we have right now for most people. Could not say it better. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up here. You guys, thank you so much for coming to have this conversation. Uh, fr from Chainlink Labs, we just wanted to sit down and learn about this product, uh, learn about what's happening on Polygon and Aave and, and all over the place. And um, so this is just extremely exciting for us and for DeFi. So I, I really appreciate your time. So will our audience. Um, for all of these projects, I'm going to put all the links down in the YouTube description. So I won't go around and have you tell everything where you are. I'm going to, I'm going to fill up that YouTube description. But here's my plea for the audience. Join these communities. Go to the discords, go to the telegram, join Chainlink, join Instagram, join Gelato, join Afe, and join Polygon. There's so much good activity that happens there, networking, um, you, you get information about these new products. And this is where all this happens is, is these are coordinated in the chats, um, uh, these projects uh, like that. So please go join them. Uh, thank you all for watching uh, this uh, panel, our Chainlink user roundtable, our bridge to L2. Um, we'll have uh, uh, more of this kind of thing soon. So like and subscribe to the Chainlink YouTube channel. And thank you very much.